All right, <laughs> I'm back with another Destiny 2 video and not the one I thought I'd be making again. Yesterday, I did the Azacross email where I was like, eh, I don't know about this. Uh, and then I was gonna talk about Into the Light today since we had the big reveal stream. But now we have a new controversy um, based on an IGN article that just went up. Uh, I personally do not think this is connected to the Azacross email as there was essentially no overlap between them other than just sort of general bad vibes. But uh, the IGN article is something to take very seriously. It's by Rebecca Valentine. She's very good at sourcing. She's very good at this kind of thing. Um, very important to follow all of this to figure out what's going on. It is overwhelmingly bad, worrisome, confusing news. Uh, it has to do with both Marathon, Destiny 2, and I guess Bungie as a whole. And while it is sort of a continuation of past bad news we've heard, there's some new things in here that, I don't know, are worse. <laughs> I guess things are not improving to say the least okay so i'm not, I'm not gonna like just fully read through this like word for word you should go read it yourself i really it's it's tough when so much news is made in one article i did not write because i both need to cover it but i also want to give full credit to that article and have people read it so go read it um this does start with the big marathon announcement that uh joe ziegler has replaced chris barrett as the game director of marathon the weird thing about this is that the original IGN article makes it sound like this just happened. Um, there's no mention of a timeline for this. It says IGN learned he is being replaced by a former Valorant game director. But before this article ran, Joe Ziegler took to Twitter to announce that for the last nine months, he's been working on Marathon as game director and that they're going to show stuff soon. Um, I really hate when when places do this where IGN asked them for comments and then they didn't comment and then they just put out a tweet undercutting the article that was about to come out to try and get ahead of it. I think it's kind of a dick move, but it happens all the time. Um, but he's he's saying here that he was he's been director for nine months. Nine months ago is it's like June 2023, and if you'll recall, Marathon was revealed. I think it was is May 23rd 2023. <laughs> And that was a video that featured Chris Barrett very heavily as game director, and they were debuting the whole thing. And then this timeline means that anywhere from a couple weeks to a month later, he was replaced as game director by Joe, Joe Ziegler. And Ziegler is uh, a the former game director of Valorant, who, uh, is it Valorant or Valorant? I always get this wrong. <laughs> um, who uh, started with Bungie in 2022, and we didn't really know what he was doing. Barrett obviously would have been working on Marathon a long time before the reveal, but I don't know. Something weird happened there. The The article cites this as him being removed. It now says he is executive creator, creative director at Bungie, which sounds like a Luke Smith, Mark Noseworthy type promotion into some high level unspecified job where we don't know what he's doing. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go more into leadership later, but. So that's kind of weird. The good news is that from what I've heard, everybody likes Joe Ziegler. Everybody likes working with him, which is good. Um, but then we transition into more bad news where this article uh, also says that because of the change, um, uh, they are pouring resources to get the marathon out the door. But under Ziegler's new leadership, the, it is shifting from a game that has customizable player characters to a selectable cast of heroes. Everybody hates this. It is hard to understate just how much negativity I have seen about the idea of Marathon moving from custom characters to being some sort of hero shooter extractor instead. Um, it stands to reason, obviously, that with Ziegler as game director, he comes from uh, Valorant, Valorant, <laughs> and that is uh, made up of heroes entirely. So maybe that's something he's more comfortable with. There are successful hero games, the, the most notable of which right now are probably uh, Valorant and Apex. And Overwatch kind of started all this to a certain extent. I mean, Team Fortress started it, but you know what I mean? Like Overwatch is sort of the modern era of this, although it's struggling quite a bit now. The problem here is that what is the audience they're going after here now? What One idea is that they're trying to differentiate differentiate themselves from Tarkov, which does not have like a hero character thing. So they're like, okay, we're an extraction game, but we're not like Tarkov. We're different because we have heroes. 
But then you leap into this situation where if you're relying on like a good chunk of the Destiny community, which likes Bungie, which even likes Bungie PvP, to head over to Marathon, that was already kind of a tall order because you're asking them to switch uh, from Destiny, a very you know, specifically crafted PvE and PvP game, to Marathon in, in a PvP extraction shooter. But now you're doing it with hero characters, which Bungie has never done a hero shooter before. Destiny two, Destiny 1 and 2 are all about player customization. That is like the core of the whole game is making your own guardian or trio of guardians uh, to be your custom character, custom looks, custom build, your favorite weapons, blah, blah, blah. When you get to hero shooter territory, then you have to become like a main of whoever. And you have usually how this works is a set, you know, period of uh, set uh range of skills that you have that are all kind of the same. You often will have a set weapon. Um, and while well, you might be able to customize some things here or there, depending on the game, uh, it is overwhelmingly <laughs> based on just sort of set hero kits with, with relatively little customization. So trying to get a bunch of Destiny players to move from that to your hero extraction game, nobody seems really interested in that. I'm not going to rule out the possibility that like perhaps this is not as bad as it sounds. Perhaps there is a really interesting twist on this they're doing that could still be a lot of fun. Maybe there is some level of customization here that wouldn't be, you know, maybe is something as super fixed as, as an Overwatch or something. Uh, but I get certainly why people are upset about it. And then so if, if you're not really going after Destiny players with this, who are you going after? Like the extraction market is pretty small. It's Tarkov, and now we have Helldivers, which is technically ex an extraction game, but it's a PvE extraction game, which is not at all the same. And then you have the hero shooter crowd, where Valorant is more like CSGO style, Overwatch is arcadey, and Apex is a battle royale. And this is none of those things, but like I don't, I, I don't know what the audience is here. And I think they're really, really going to have a bit of a tough time searching for an audience for this game unless it is just unequivocally freaking amazing and the best shooter you've ever played and like genre heroes don't matter it's just it must be played uh no idea if that's going to be how it is but i understand why people are very upset about the idea of it moving to a hero shooter and why that kills interest for a lot of people based on sort of hero shooter fatigue even if we are still seeing successful hero shooters in the market it does feel like trend chasing to a certain extent which Say what you will about Destiny 2, it has not really done a lot of trend chasing, uh, I would say, compared to um, competition, and people have been trying to chase Destiny 2, and have almost all failed at doing that, so I don't know. A hero stuff is is very skeptical, it draws a lot of skepticism, which I understand. Um, so that's a lot of the marathon stuff. There's news in here that Matter, their their previous game that was mentioned, has been canceled twice, first in 2020 and then in 2022 again, which they tried to rework it. Gummy Bears, that game that they got mentioned briefly, still exists, but is like apparently it's on ice because of all the other crap happening at Bungie right now. So don't think that is anything like a timeline. Don't necessarily know if that will even make it out. Uh, so we'll see. The most worrisome part in this is... Almost everyone at Bungie appears to be worried that more layoffs are going to be coming after the final shape uh, in order to, you know, offset costs <laughs> for a budget where, quote, nothing adds up, according to someone who knows about budgets at Bungie. It is pretty rare to have someone who, like, knows the internal financials of a company at that high of a level speak to a reporter and say something like, nothing adds up <laughs> in terms of the budget of your studio. As someone who does reporting like this, it is pretty rare to get that kind of information, um, you know, so good on Valentine, but it also speaks to sort of DEF CON level, you know, panic inside the company to a certain extent if that is being spoken about. And the idea is that uh, something will have to curb costs after the final shape, unless the final shape does just extraordinarily, extremely well and makes bazillions of dollars. And then they need that to cover the gap until Marathon releases. I've spoken about this this period of time many times in the past where it's just kind of fucked <laughs> like my the my rare use of strong language here but like the final shape pre-orders are low I don't see anything surging that in the next couple of months here uh I don't agree with that one analysis from a while ago where it's like they're 25 percent of you know light follower like it's not going to be like that bad but it I don't imagine this is going to be some sort of sky high 
you know, return to the game for bazillions of players. And like, I just don't think it's going to perform at the level that they need it to, to consider it some sort of wild success to, you know, bridge the revenue gap, save jobs, as nice as that would be. Um, that seems unlikely. And then what does seem likely is a huge player drop off after the final shape, because it's supposed to be the concluding chapter of the light and darkness saga. So many people may be trying to, you know, see that to the end, see destiny two or destiny one, really the whole franchise to an end by at least getting through that expansion, but then they're going to leave and do other things if they haven't left already. And there is more destiny content coming. We know about episodes, you know, right after that, but those are disconnected stories that are still seasons, even though they're not calling them seasons. And I, I don't know if that's going to be enough to get players to stick around. It feels like there's going to be a huge fall off. And then you have this unspecified period of time between June 2024 when Final Shape comes out and sometime in 2025 when Marathon is supposed to come out and really needs to come out because there needs to be um, something bringing in revenue. The problem is there's no guarantee that Marathon is going to be some sort of mega hit as we've just discussed I didn't mention this, but I also think the pivot to heroes may be a monetization ploy where games like Valorant, games like Apex, um, not only can you sell really pricey skins for them, these $20, $25 skins, uh, they have these, you know, crazy high microtransaction paths where um, I don't know all the prices, but like Valorant has weapon skin bottles for like a hundred bucks. I think you can upgrade them all the way to like something costs 300 bucks total. There's heirlooms in Apex Legends where trying to pull for those can cost hundreds of dollars. I'm not super intimately involved in these games, but I know that these things can really add up. So if they're trying to do stuff like that in Destiny for these sort of, the ability to do these huge macro transactions, that may be something that they're trying to go after too. But again, no guarantees that that's going to work. And no, there's no information about the future of Destiny 2 here past what, what has already been announced. They're just sort of talking about the final shape revenue as a bridge to Marathon. Not to say Destiny 2 is going to stop. That is not at all what Bungie has said. They've, in fact, said the opposite. But there's no information in here about what's happening. Um, there, So, obviously, all of Bungie's struggles always come back to leadership. Fans are sick of leadership. Bungie employees are sick of leadership and are very angry at leadership. Sometimes specific people within leadership that I don't really want to just name here because I don't know if that's appropriate. But most people know who the general leaders of Bungie are now. The report in here says that senior company leadership will leave in droves uh, in the summer of 2026 is that's when the final payouts from the Sony acquisition comes in. And their idea is they're going to get Marathon out, get out with their money, and then leave someone else to deal with the mess that remains of trying to get people to stick with Marathon or trying to get people to you know, still play Destiny. They're just going to peace out. So that's shitty. <laughs> like That's really shitty of them, but not unexpected given... Uh, you know, everything we know about leadership at the present moment. This could be good news. Um, you know, if if someone internal within Bungie ascends and takes the reins uh, and, you know, ha has a better vision for Destiny and Bungie as a whole and people don't hate them, <laughs> like that could be good. If Sony takes over, which seems likely, if not <laughs> or possible, if not likely, there could be better leadership there. In theory, that's that's better in the way of now. Um, I just don't think that there's going to do this like, oh, Sony's just going to scrap Bungie and sell them for parts or, you know, dissolve them into their other live projects. That seems, even with all the issues, that seems unlikely. It may be a much smaller studio going forward. It may cut back on a lot of these future incubation projects that are really going nowhere. And it may just turn to be sort of balancing Destiny and Marathon for a really long time. Um, I would be surprised if just Bungie didn't exist completely. If they were still independent, maybe, but Sony, I don't, is is as annoyed as they may be with how all this has gone. It's hard for me to foresee that happening. We'll see. Again, like the short term here is a lot of bad news, but long term, I don't think we can make any full judgments yet about the long term fate of the company because if leadership does leave, leadership is replaced, Marathon is a hit, Destiny does find its footing again. I don't think we can just write everything off. It's a very bad moment right now. It's probably going to be a very bad moment after the final shape. No matter what the quality of the final shape is, I think it's going to be a bad year at least after that. But long term, we'll see. Um, that's I think that's mostly it. Uh, one piece, Sony has left the studio to sort out its own troubles, was not responsible for the layoffs. Pete Parsons took responsibility, which we kind of already knew that. 
And that was back when they said leadership was not going to take pay cuts. I did hear leadership took some cuts for like bonuses or something, but I, I don't know. It wasn't, you know, what needed to be done, certainly. Uh, so yeah, the, the main point of new information here is the marathon game director thing, which is pretty weird. It's it, That's a very weird situation with the timeline and the failure to announce that you've had a new game director in one of your most important projects for the past nine months. I guess I get I get why they want, wouldn't want to debut Marathon and then three weeks later be like, by the way, Chris Barrett's out and uh, you know Joe Ziegler's in because that's very weird and would raise a lot of questions. Still raising a lot of questions now, honestly, because I would love to know what happened there. Perhaps we'll find out later. But um, yeah, and then I think that the idea that it's going to be potentially a hero shooter as the n- new direction of the game is pretty problematic from in a lot of ways. Uh, we could all be wrong. It could be amazing, but it's certainly um, something that is easy to be skeptical about. So that's my take on this whole thing. Again, go read the article. Uh, maybe tomorrow I'll finally get to talk about Into the Light. I did write an article about it yesterday, but this is more pressing news, I would say. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.